The six Smart and Fair neighbourhood trials for Project LEO are all about involving local communities in the sustainable energy systems of the future. I'm here in the heart of Ainsham. The community group involved here is Transition Ainsham Area, or as we like to call it, Green Tea. We're standing in an area of new development. Ensham has over 3,000 new houses planned. The trial has done very detailed modelling to show if they are built to zero carbon standards and if they produce their own energy, they can produce a net zero energy balance. We know that we've got to shift to heating our homes with electricity. There is a risk that if we don't use energy in a clever way, we're going to need about three times as much electricity as is generated at the moment. The community has been involved with very extensive consultation. We've taken opportunity of big events like Great Big Green Week. We will have a zero carbon energy action plan very soon. The next stage is to make sure that it's adopted by our local councils and that it's stewarded into the long term. Today we are on the Oval at Rose Hill and I'm standing in front of a set of new build flats with solar panels. Rose Hill and Ifley Low Carbon Group invited the new residents to consider using electricity flexibly to reduce the peaks in the electricity grid when people all put on their electrical appliances at the same time, such as when people come back from work those who took part, they were quite excited by it and surprised their little contribution actually had a tangible effect that could be measured. The energy made by the panels can be stored in a local battery and then fed back and used by the flats using local energy locally and that's what we call smart energy. It's been really great to be part of a local project and Rose Hill and Ifley Low Carbon Group look forward to being invited to participate in the next project. We're here at Springfield Meadows, which is one of the greenest developments in the UK. These houses are built to passive house standards. Every house is generating their own power. Many of them are also storing their own power. The problem here is the secondary substation cannot handle the amount of generation and this means that residents cannot export the excess solar power generated back onto the grid. So we are looking for a solution which mitigates the need of having to upgrade that infrastructure by introducing flexibility for residents to adapt the way that they use their energy in a community. We've had a great response, more than half signed up to the study. So this has been a fantastic project at the Grid Edge, identifying whether flexibility can reduce the need to upgrade the infrastructure will have a huge impact on the future of the low carbon economy. The Westfield site in Oxfordshire is home to the south of England's first 100% community owned wind farm. It was built in 2008 and in 2012 it was joined by West Mill Solar Farm. They were invited to join the Smart and Fair Neighbourhood project in order to bring that wealth of data about their operations and ask what are the opportunities given that the electricity system and the way it's managed is changing as we go forwards. One of the really exciting things that we've learned is that neither the wind farm nor the solar farm is currently using all of its permission to export electricity. And in particular, if they were able to combine that spare capacity to export generation, then they would be able to make even better use of the site. So it's fantastic that this project has given them insights into how they might be able to do that more effectively and efficiently and have even more impact in providing clean electricity to their local community. here on Osney Island. We're in the process of creating a kind of laboratory where we can experiment with what the smart grid of the future might look like. At the moment, the electricity substation we have here copes perfectly okay with peak demand on the island. But as more people acquire electric vehicles and switch to electric heating, demand is going to exceed the capacity of the local network. We have to find ways of generating more electricity locally, storing electricity and managing demand if we're going to avoid expensive investment in infrastructure.
Working with the local network operator, SSEN, we now have as good an understanding of what's happening at the grid edge here on the island as we've got anywhere in the country. And this enables us to start to play around with different scenarios and explore the technical challenges, uh, cost benefits of different options, and uh, we're really looking forward to building on what we've created so far. It's been a fantastic journey. It can't all be driven centrally. It's got to involve communities and it's got to involve consumers in defining how they want things to be for the future. And that's what's happening here. I'm Sarah and I'm part of the SmartFlex heat pump trial that Project Leo are carrying out in Deddington and the wider Oxfordshire area. Heat pumps are potentially the solution for parts of the country that need to come off fossil fuels. So the trial actually takes control of my heat pump itself, but it does it within my settings. I just told the thermostat, like you do any other thermostat, what temperature is comfortable. The temperature has just been very gently turned up before a peak time for energy use, so sort of 4 till 7 p.m. And, and turned down during, so that the same energy might get used, but not everyone at the same time. It's so easy, it's all about us making slight tweaks to our behaviour that together adds up to quite a powerful difference. It's nice to be part of something bigger. You might find out something new. The future of the low carbon local economy has arrived. Participating in trials like this means being part of that future.